Oh yeah, <laughs> 16 years of it, yep. Is there anything you can really add that people don't know to it? or? You can't really describe it until you're in it. Um, it's white out, if you're in the bands, it's white out conditions, you know. I've been trying to, you know, I've talked to the coaches, talked to the players a little bit this morning, showed some video of what it could be like. It's hit or miss wherever the bands are, you know. Um, is what it is for both sides, so we just got to, you know, expect the worst, and, and if it's better than the worst, then good. Were you in that white out game in 2018? No, I was not. I was in one in 09. I was in uh, a few back against Miami late in the season where, where the lake snow set in. Um, but once it sets in and it stays on top of you, it, you know, you're going to get the heavy stuff. Knowing what you know about the area, do you think there's a chance it gets moved? That it gets moved? Yeah. I do know if it's if it sticks over Orchard Park, it'll be tough. I think if it ever if they get the snow they're calling for, it could be tough to get it cleaned out, get it ready for the game. I'm not sure. You know, we're we're up for anything. Um, if we got to go to the parking lot, we'll you know. So Alex, I mean, you could have one extreme to, or the other. You could be inside in a dome. Mm -hmm. You got two game plans to work. Uh, we have contingency plans for both. Obviously, we have a plan for good weather. Um, bands stay south or north and it's not a bad day, then good. If we move somewhere else, good. We'll be ready for both. Um, you know, it's one thing that COVID years have done for us. We're very flexible, um, used to adapting and adjusting to any circumstances that come up. It's not often that we see the offensive line struggle like it did last week. Is that just a, it's a solid group you were going against, obviously, but mm -hmm. what, what were the other problems you guys had? It was just one of those days, again, we had uh, one earlier in the season where we just didn't play our best. Uh, it was just individuals at each time throughout the course just added up to, you know, overall not what we're used to um, from those guys. And uh, there's no one's going to work harder to correct that than that group of men in that room. So I'm not worried about that at all. After the game mentioned how some similarities with how New England and Miami both kind of attach you guys defensively. Can you kind of expound on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're good defenses, you know, good, talented players, especially in, in the front seven. Um, other than that, that's probably the, the biggest similarity. I mean, only three targets for Amari, and it seems like when he has bigger games, you guys do much better. So what yeah. happened there? It's <laughs> tough to really go back and look at targets as a way to judge whether we were trying to get him the ball. Um, a lot of those early calls were he's number one in the progression. Again, defense dictates where the ball goes. Um, we definitely have a, you know, a heightened awareness of trying to get him involved early and often. Um, sometimes the defense doesn't allow for that. But um, you know, just because he was targeted three times, he, he, his number was called multiple times without getting the ball thrown his way. Jacoby was saying uh, a couple days beforehand that Amari was telling him, look, if it's not there, you know, get off of me and, and go somewhere else. Do you think he may have done that too soon at times? I don't think so. Just thinking back to the game, I mean, there was a lot of double Amari. Uh, that was their plan going in, especially on third downs. They were going to, you know, assign two guys to him um, and make sure he wasn't a part of the plan. But at the same time, we got to, you know, step up and make plays from other positions that are singled. So. How did uh, Deshaun look in his first practice back? Good. He looked good. Um, I know he's been working hard while he's been away from the building. Um, excited to see him out there. You know, he made some throws um, after practice, and we, we call a little opportunity period where, you know, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's impressive stuff. So he looks good. Uh, continue to work him in. And, uh, you know, he's been in the, in the room now for a while. So I think he has a good understanding of how we work in the game week and, uh, you know, transition him in when the time comes. Up to balance, getting him ready for a couple weeks from now and also keeping Jacoby on his normal routine? Yeah, I mean, it's not tough, but, you, you know, you just have to be, um, you have intent on what you're trying to get done. What reps that you can give Deshaun that you feel like Jacoby has a great understanding of that doesn't actually need that rep again. So it is, you're trying to make sure you have the right place uh, selected for Deshaun with at the same time not shorting Jacoby in his preparation. Similar to what you saw during training camp from him in, in the off season? Uh, yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah, he's ready to go, he looks good. Um, you know, when that time comes, we'll be ready for that. He's got two reps. He has been, yep. There's that fine line of trying to keep you know, Josh Dobbs ready to go, too. So there's, there's a little bit of a juggling act, but I think we've, we've, uh, we have a plan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you see anything that you guys were able to talk about 
talk about in meetings with Deshaun while he's been able, not been on the field, kind of implement yesterday? Uh, not, uh, other than the fact that he's just really sharp in his play calling, like he's been practicing obviously for this, this time away from the building. So uh, when the plays came in, they came right back to the huddle. They were very, you know, clean, uh, good calls. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that I noticed, just his command of, of the verbiage. <laughs> few days to get Jacoby ready if he's going to be playing in snowy and icy condition. Probably just watch the 2017 game that he played there, really. I mean, he's he was in the snowball. He was in that game. He played the full game, uh, looked at all his passes in that game. Kind of just, you know, he's he's the least guy I'm worried about. It. He's already experienced it and lived it. You, you actually went back and looked at that game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or just you and Just me, uh, just to take a look to see what what he was able to do in the worst conditions that I've seen in a while. I don't know. It's a, that's a question for whoever the play caller was at that time. But it was he was effective. He had some effective plays for sure. And it, that was as bad as it gets. I've not seen conditions there um, that bad. When you uh, look at that Buffalo defense, how much of a difference is Von Miller made? He makes a difference, obviously. His sack production, his, his speed, his ability to, to rush off the edge is, is big. Um, they're very deep and with depth of solid players that, that rotate in up front and play a lot. Um, you know, they have good pass rushers on the other side as well. Um, so our challenge is, is to obviously protect if it comes down to that type of day. Um, they're good across the board up front. A related question, Alex. Um, we just talked to Antonio and he said that he thought that was the worst collective performance for the line in Miami. Like, what do you think went wrong? How do you get them back on the right track? Um, I think you just show them the tape, and then they correct themselves. I think Coach Callahan does a great job in that room. Um, those guys hold themselves to a super high standard. Um, so that alone, I think, will will help. The caliber of guys you have in that room give you confidence that they, they're going to bounce back? Absolutely. Again, it's an anomaly. It's one of those days where we just didn't play well collectively, which is rare for our group up front. Better than anyone, you've thrown the ball up there. What's it like to pick out a target and throw it because it was nowhere near it? Um, it's, <laughs> it can be frustrating. You know, it really can be. Um, there's a lot of different things from quarterback play, not gripping the ball too tight, uh, making sure you follow through. A lot of things I learned from Jim Kelly in my time there. Uh, he had a lot of those games. Um, the bottom line is it's going to be rough. If it is those conditions, it's going to be hard for both both sides. For like a rain game, you do the wet ball drill. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you can do drill-wise to prepare for having to carry or throw a snowball? It probably comes down to individuals. Um, some quarterbacks might wear two gloves. I'm not sure where Jacoby lies in that. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's one of those things you really can't prepare for unless you're I don't know how you would do it. Stick your hands in the snow and grab the ball. But it's, um, again, it's, it is what it is, and we have no control over it. So we're not going to let it um, phase us at all. I know it's not going to be what, it, what, what it, it's going to be on Sunday, but you were part of the Bill staff in 07 when you guys played the game here. Yeah. What do you remember from that, that game and, and, and those conditions? Uh, very similar. Obviously, not as bad as 17 up there uh, versus Indy. But, um, you know, the biggest thing that stands out is walking. I was in the box at the time, thank goodness. And I walked down to the locker room at halftime, and our defensive back coach, George Katavlis, had about four inches of snow on top of his head. And, you know, so that's my biggest memory, to be honest with you. It was a horrible uh, game. I believe it was a overtime 6 3, 9 6 game. It was really low story. It was 8 9 6. 8, no, yeah. yeah. So it was super, yeah, the one here. Yeah, so that uh, my memories of, of obviously Coach Katavis with the, the hairdo and uh, just brutal conditions. And you know, three games too in Orchard Park. I was in that one as well. Yeah, yeah. Teams bring out the worst. Who knows? Or he's been in and out of the lineup. When he's, do you really notice that they change that they're better? When he's on the field. Oh, sure. He's a great player. I mean, he's a special guy for those guys, for that for that defense. I mean, um, those safeties are really good, high caliber players. Uh, Micah Hyde being out, you know, that's for them. That's a blow. Uh, Poirier, obviously, very instinctive, very talented guy. Understands uh, what you're trying to do scheme wise, and he he makes a lot of plays on the, on the ball. So, um, you know, when he's in there, they're better. So many interceptions and so many takeaways. Uh, does that? 
change how aggressive you can be in the passing game or anything like that? Um, I, I just think that it heightens our awareness of, you know, taking care of the football. Um, you know, that's that's an area where we've, as a, as a team, emphasized improvement, you know, uh, getting back on the plus side of the turnover margin. And it starts with us not giving them any. So I, I know that's a, the number one goal of this week is to come out with zero turnovers or giveaways for us.